Welcome to all viewers out there on the west side of the river, where tonight I have a special show for you to demonstrate how a BBS works using the computer I have with me in the studio. I would like to acknowledge my appreciation to Leonard Boucher for bringing it down to the studio so that I can show some things about BBSs and how they work. I'm going to take you into a program where I will show you step by step how to configure a modem and terminal. Then I will actually log on to Live BBS and show some basic things that it can do. I'll be airing some more BBS numbers for you to call later on in the show. But right now I'm at the computer here and we're going to have some fun with the computer and the telephone. And first of all, I want to look at some setup procedures in the program Procom Plus. I'm only going to point out and take you to the most important ones. You really need to know the ones that must be set correctly. I've already got the program started up, so I'm going to be going into the first setup screen and show you some things about the setup program. So here we go. Okay, the first procedure I'm going to show is how the modem is set up. And as you can see, there's a, a list of options here. You've got modem options, terminal, uh, general, we're going to go into file path options, and save setup options. Those are the ones that we're going to cover. And I'm going to go into the modem option first, and into the general option of the modem options. Now, the only command that we're concerned about here, in this option here, is that the AT command, the dialing command. Uh, this is important because if you have a, a dial pulse phone or a rotary dial, you would use the command ATDP. If you have a touch tone phone, you would use the command ATTD. Okay, so that's important that that's set correctly there. The other ones here, wait for connection, that's uh, to allow the phone to keep dialing until it disconnects. Uh, standard is 30 seconds, that's the default. Pause between calls if you're redialing, that one will uh, pause before it attempts to do another redial. So that's uh, those commands there. Now if you want to change one of those commands, all you do is enter a letter like that, and then you would retype in the appropriate one, ATTD or ATDP. It's correctly set right now, so I'm just going to hit enter and hit return. Now we're all finished with this screen, so as you can see over here it says exit out of this modem option screen, so hit exit and we're back to this point here. And we'll hit ESC again. And the next option we're going to go down to is the terminal option. And the way you access these options too is you move the cursor down and then it highlights it, as you can see on the screen there. And we hit enter again. On this screen here, you can see various options. The only one that we're most concerned about this time is the terminal emulation and the duplex setting. Now, the terminal emulation, if you hit A, a little window will come up, and it'll prompt you to select one of these options here on which emulation you want to do. ANSI and the VT-102 are pretty well the standard ones that you would choose from, either ANSI or VT-102. And this means, uh, emulation means that when you're using a computer, uh, your computer that you're using this program on simulates it as if it was a VT-102-100 com terminal computer. And the duplex, uh, on most bulletin boards it should be set at full. It is set at full right now, so that's correct. So ANSI is all set correctly here now, so we just go escape and nothing's changed. If you want to change it, you would just highlight the cursor, press the return key, and then it would be highlighted OK. The duplex is set correctly. Now, if we wanted to change that, you would go up there. This is a toggle, so all you do is hit the space bar to change it, and it toggles to half duplex. We'll toggle it back to full duplex, and we'll hit return, and the other parameters are set correctly. Again, we hit escape. We're back to the main setup menu, and we move the cursor down again to go to the next item, which is our general options parameter. And these are less important parameters. They're to do with exploding windows, also alarm sound effects, graphics effects. 
and I'll just show you what I mean by that. Okay, on this one here, you see exploding windows. You go on exploding windows on. Again, if you select A, it's a toggle. You just select space bar to toggle on or off. Sound effects, the same thing. Alarm, the same thing. Alarm time is to beep you when you've logged on or when a file download or upload is completed, the alarm will beep. And the other ones are less important commands. So if those all are set to off, then you won't hear any sounds or you won't see any special graphics effects. But I'll leave them on for now because to show you what, what those are. So those are all set correctly, and we'll move on to the next screen. Again, we hit Escape, and we'll go down to the File Path option here. Now this one here is to set your paths for your downloaded files, set up files to uh, capture files for all the screen information that's coming off the screen, and it also has an editor hotkey you can use a viewer key and you can set these up these can be actual programs or you can program these into the program here uh, you see on C we, we've set the download path to A so that means all files I'm downloading off of a board will be automatically saved onto the A drive okay the other ones are left blank because I'm not going to use them and default file name for log files if we want to set that, we could we could just say uh, p log dot doc, and then whenever we hit a, a specific key, the Alt F1 key, all the information scrolling on the screen will be going output to that file called p log dot doc. So that's how that works, and we'll just go escape again, and there is another screen here. Protocol, that's for if you want to use external uh, pro programs to download protocols. Uh, we won't be using this one. There is one here, though, abort downloads. This means that if, if the download is aborted for some reason, we want the file totally deleted. We don't want half a file kept. So that's why uh, I've got delete. I don't want the download kept at all. If we said uh, H and we said... Uh, we could keep them, but I don't see any point in keeping half-saved files. So we'll just toggle it back to delete, hit return, and hit escape. Now all the options are set right now, so the only other thing that we have to do is hit the down arrow key again, save the setup options. You'll notice the light's going on drive A, that means the setup options are saved. All the options that we set and change is now on there so that we never have to use this screen again. Everything's set. If you want to change it later, it can be changed, but most people like to set up something once and leave it that way. Okay. Now, on a lot of these boards, too, as you can see, there's no carrier, which means I got logged off because I didn't have any input. This happens because they don't want the boards tied up, and if you don't have any keyboard input for a while, they'll log you off. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dial in again to the directory here. Uh, but first of all, I, I'm going to show you one last thing here that we have to do. This is another setup screen. This one here t shows you the current settings of the baud rate at 1200, no parity, eight data bits, one stop bit, and you're using COM part one. As you can see down there, there's a, a list of options, one to nine. All you do is enter a number, 1 to 9, and your baud rate will change up here. The same with parity, the same with data bits, stop bits, and COM port. To save all these options, again, you hit Alt-S, and that'll save and exit, and those parameters will be stored so that you'll not have to retype them in again. Okay, so that's the setting to set your baud rate on your modem, your COM port, and different things like that. Line port set up, as you can see down there. We'll hit Escape, and we're going to dial into a directory now. And the way you do that is hit the Alt-D key. It brings up a dialing directory, which has the name of the bulletin boards. It also has the telephone numbers, the baud rates, and those other protocols, the parity, the, the data bits, the stop bits, and a script file if you need that. So that's the way that is, and we're going to dial into the one that's highlighted right now. It's called PDOPA's Binkley. The way you do that is just hit return.
You can hear the tone of the modem and the dialing tones there. It's actually dialing the phone number. You can see that on the screen here, it says wait for connection 30 seconds. This means that this time will increment to 30 before the modem will disconnect and start dialing again. As you can see now, I've changed the wait time to 35 seconds because it was cutting out when it got to the 29th mark. So I've ex extended the time a bit here to connect into this board. It's now beeping its signal that the board is connected up and it's about to log on to this board here. It says press the escape key, so we press the escape key. The boards are now connecting together. It's now loading the bulletin board and as you can see, the sign on message is now coming on. It's asking for the first name. So you enter the first name, upper or lower case, it doesn't matter. You enter the last name. It asks you, it confirms the name you've typed, and it's asking for your password now. We're now on to the board. It's checking the mailbox to see if I have any mail. I don't have any mail or new, new messages. So we hit return. As you can see at the bottom is the status line which tells what BOD we're at. Uh, the log is closed right now and we are online. now paging the sysop. You can page the sysops if he's available and you can actually chat with him. I'm going to do this very briefly and show you how this works.
as you can see, there's kind of a window set up here too, where this, the top one is my window, the bottom one is Alan's window, and he's typing in some information now, or uh, it can be reversed too. It depends who's paging who, because the sysop can page you or you can page a sysop. Okay, he ended the chat there, so we're just going to press enter. Now to go to the main menu, it says pr pr push print, press enter, and there's options here where it says goodbye, log off, statistics, version, and we're just going to briefly... When you're logging off, you can leave a note to the sysop too to leave many comments or messages. We'll say no. And as you can see, it leaves a, a log off message there. And you see that there's no carrier. Now before I log back on, I'm just going to show you how to quickly enter a new number into the dialing directory. I'm reloading the program back in again. And I'm just going to show you now how to enter a number into the board. You have to go to a blank line. You press R and you type in the name, the number, we'll just give it a dummy number. The baud rate is okay, so we hit enter. The parity is okay, we hit enter. The data bits is okay. Stop bits is okay. Duplex is okay. Everything is okay, so all we do is hit enter. We hit enter again. And now you can see that there's a new entry in there called Aurora.
I'm now just going to go back to the board that we're at before. We're running a bit short of time, so I'm going to just take you through just a couple of options, not as many as I thought I would like to take you through, and just show you how to post a message. There's a new number to call. Somebody's advertising a new bulletin board, 663-9078. A lot of people post messages like that on these boards to let them know about different boards that might be starting up. An alert comes on that says the system will be unavailable in 38 minutes. It's flashing. It's sort of a, a warning message that will be going down. Sometimes the sysops have to do maintenance on these bulletin boards. Okay, I'm just going to show you now how briefly to enter a message. It's E to enter message. This will just be a local message, as you can see. It won't be a private message. And it's going to be to everybody, so you say all. And it's just going to be, we'll just say a test message. And all you do is just type in your message, and uh, as it was a regular typewriter, you can change the spelling. And whenever you're finished, you just hit a blank return, and then you can save it, delete it, list it, or whatever. We'll just say save it and return. And now you'll notice it says highest is five. Okay, we're very running very short of time now, so I'm just going to show you the message is there, and you can see that that message came up okay. Okay, I'll try to continue this on another program. Uh, it seems to be more involved. Uh, right now, we're just going to go back to the main menu. And we're going to log off. We're going to leave a brief message to Alan and say, thank you to him. Save it, and it'll just log me off. Okay. I'd just like to point out, too, to people that my new season will be starting soon, and the next date of the show in the new season will be on the September the 4th. I'll be on at 8 o'clock on this day. It'll be a live show. I'll be taking telephone calls again at 475-9944. So look forward to this date, September the 4th, when my new season starts. The next show for the summer season, the last show, will be on August the 30th at 11 o'clock. I hope you've enjoyed today's show. Thank you for watching. And
Hi, welcome back to my program again, where tonight I will continue with the demonstration with the modem and telephone to show what else can be done with the BBS. I will cover uploads, downloads, file searches, listing files, and looking for just new files that might have been posted. I will also show how to post or read messages that will be sent to many boards, even international ones. And I'm just going to log on to the computer while I'm talking here. While the computer's dialing, I'm just going to review very quickly what I talked about before, and that was setting up the modem. And as soon as the computer's dialed, I'll uh, get into this uh, just a minute. Okay, the computer is dialing the number, the telephone line's ringing. We have a connection, as you can hear the high-pitched tone. And I'm just going to try again here. Last time I covered setting up the modem, the terminal, setting up the general options, the file transfer, the protocols, the line port setup, and the dialing directory. As soon as this... Okay, we're connected in again to the board. And we now are online. As you can see on the screen, it's a, a welcome message is coming up to say, welcome to the PC users group. At the bottom of the screen, you'll notice that it says login. On this particular board, you have to type in PC BBS first in lowercase letters. Then you type in your user ID, which in this case is just my first initial and my middle initial and my last name. And then it asks for your password. Okay, now it just comes up with a quote there. Now you can see that we're into the initial menu called the main menu. You'll see on the screen, uh, the highlight is under mail. That's the option that's currently selected. If we want to select any options, all we do is just type in the first letter. For example, if we want to go to the upload, we type in U and now we're at the upload screen to upload a file. If you want to return, you just type in R, and it returns. Okay. Now, first of all, I'm just going to show you how we download a file. And the way you do that, okay, is you type in D for download. The areas come up now, which are you can see there's the utility, spreadsheet, DBase, languages, communications, word processing, games, and miscellaneous. We're going to select one of these here, and we're going to select utilities. Now what comes up are the disks that you can select from under the utility area. There's many disks here, and I'm just going to select one of them. Uh, we'll select one called disk 1, and we will go uh, select disk. Okay, so you hit D again, D for disk select, disk 1. Now it's going to tell you all the files on disk 1, okay? Now you can see in front of the file names now, those are times that tells you how long it'll take to download that file. Okay, we're going to pick the shortest one possible here. And there's one that that's will take 10 seconds long. It's called xlfat.com. What you do here is you select the file, file select. You type in the name, xflat.com. Okay. 
Now you go E for execute. On this particular computer, you press the page down key, and then you press enter. You select the protocol, but our protocol has already been set to C-Link, so we just press enter. Now you'll see there's a screen that came up here. It's uh, looking for the file, and as soon as it finds it, it's going to list it on here, the file name and uh, the size of it. So right now it's uh, downloading the file. You can see that there's the protocol file, name the file size. There's a block checking factor, the total blocks, the transfer time, how long it'll take to transfer the file. And at the bottom, it will tell you when it's finished transferring. When it beeps, uh, it will say when it's finished uh, downloading the file. You also can do an arc list on this one too, which you can actually look inside with this option here, right inside the file, and it will tell you the files that are inside the archive. They could be exe files or text files. Okay, it's beeping now, and we can just check that just to see if it's on there. And the way you do that is with the, you can see on the screen now, these are, you can choose it from the command menu. We're going to choose the DOS, uh, DOS gateway, Alt F4, and just do a directory and see if it's there. Okay, we cannot, uh, okay, we can do another one. Okay, we're just going to check the files now on A, A, colon. Okay, now you can see a list of files on A, and we're just going to search for this one. A, colon. And we're just going to look for the file that we downloaded here. And I do not see it there. Okay, so that gives you an idea of how to download a file. Now, to get out of this, we're just going to go back to the other menu there. And we're going to return again. And we're just going to show you the option called the upload option. And to, to, to upload a file, all you do in this case is hit the page up key. You, you do your C-Link again. And then you enter your file name. Okay, the window came up again, as you can see. And it will display the file name again and all the data and it'll it's uploading the file right now okay and we're going to return here and we're going to sign off the board now the way you do that is hit the buy option And you should get, uh, okay, you got a no carrier, which means you are disconnected now. But sometimes you might have to hit a key to actually force the modem to disconnect it there. Now this is the screen here that what, what tells the uh, modem to dial in which mode, either pulse dial or touch tone dial. You can see I have it set to DP, which means pulse dial. So that will tell it to use a pulse signals instead of the touch tone signals on the phone. Okay, 
So that one you can either change it to touch tone or dial pulse. And there's also a section here to set the terminal emulation. Right now it's set at VT102, which is a standard emulation. You can change that to different emulations by hitting the A, and a window comes up to, uh, to change that. Okay. And the, ge the general option screen gives you the sound effects, alarm sounds, different things like that. Uh, we've got those all set to on. You can set them off if you like. And the file path option, you can set the file path where your files are going to be downloaded, either on A or B. And you can see I have my downloaded path set to A colon. And the protocol option, there's only one that's important on this one here. That's the abort downloads option. It means if you abort in the middle of a download, the file will be erased. You can keep it, but I see no point in keeping part of a file, so I've got it set to delete there. And then finally, after you've got all those options chosen, you just save them, and they'll be saved permanently so you don't have to use this screen again. So we'll just go back to the dialing directory. Okay, to enter a number, all you do in this case is go R to revise entry, and you would enter the name of the num the name of the board, the telephone number, and the baud rate is all the same. So you would just hit return, and then this would be saved to the screen uh, exactly like this here. <coughs>